But we begin with the Freedom Riders, the group of white and black civil rights activists who rode buses across the South in 1961 with the goal of integrating public transportation and bus terminals. One of the original 13 Freedom Riders was the late, great John, Congressman John Lewis. It was a bold act of resistance to challenge the nation's segregation laws, and the riders encountered violence, beatings, and jail time. The very first ride was firebombed by a white mob in Alabama. The rides, however, would go on to transform America, setting the stage for the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Change is often met with resistance, which is why the next year, White segregationists concocted a viciously racist plan, offering black people one-way tickets to the North or to the West with the promise of a better life. These bus trips were dubbed reverse freedom rides. Here's Betty Williams on how her mother was lured onto one of them in 1962. My mother was told she was gonna have better everything. She was gonna have a job and and she was going to be able to support her family and her children was going to be able to get an education, you know, be able to go to school. You know, that alone was not the truth. Betty's mother was Layla Mae Williams of Arkansas. And those weren't the only lies that she was told. The segregationists promised Williams a presidential welcome in Hyannis, Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Here she is. Notice her outfit, the dress a triple string of pearls, a white hat, the outfit that she changed into because she was told President John F. Kennedy would be greeting her upon arrival. When she arrived, he wasn't there. There was no job or housing, nothing. Southern segregationists hatched this plan to be cruel, for certain, but also to retaliate against Northern liberals who they believed would be unable to accommodate their new black residents. It would expose them as hypocrites. This was how owning the libs looked in 1962. The Northern liberals and the NAACP, Urban League, and people like that especially, they have been crying the uh, sing song in behalf of the Negroes throughout the nation. And of course, now when it comes time for them to put up or shut up, they have shut up. That was George Singleman, a reverse freedom, or a reverse freedom rights organizer 60 years ago, but sounding you know, almost exactly like, well, a modern day Republican using people, human lives as pawns to make a political and let's face it, a racist point. Sending people of color, fleeing political and economic turmoil to the North to stick it to progressive policies. Where have we seen that before? Oh, right. In every headline that we've seen for the past two days. In what's being called an inhumane political stunt, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sent plane loads of mostly Venezuelan asylum seekers to Martha's Vineyard on Wednesday. The migrants came from Texas, landing without warning on the island south of Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Texas and Massachusetts are states that Florida Governor DeSantis does not currently govern, but DeSantis is central to this spectacle telling the Republican Party's top donors last weekend that he was considering transporting migrants to places like Martha's Vineyard. The plan was met with thunderous applause. Migrants in the group told the Miami Herald that they agreed to fly to Massachusetts on the promise of jobs and assistance, but didn't realize that they were bound for Martha's Vineyard. Three migrants told NPR that a woman named Perla approached them outside a shelter in San Antonio and lured them into boarding a plane, saying that they would be flown to Boston where they could get expedited work papers. She provided them with food and Perla offered us help, one person said, help that never arrived. According to attorneys, no one on the island knew they were coming, leaving locals to scramble to meet their needs. Immigration attorneys are now working around the clock to understand their legal situations. Here is what one of them revealed last night. They were lied to again and again and fraudulently induced to board the planes. They were told there was a surprise present for them and that there would be jobs and housing awaiting for them when they arrived. This was obviously a sadistic lie. 
Joining me now is Democratic Florida State Representative Ana Escamani, Glenn Kirshner, MSNBC legal analyst and a former federal prosecutor, and Cristina Londonio Rooney, Telemundo senior Washington correspondent. And Cristina, I know that you are not on Martha's Vineyard, but not, not far away, and I know that you've talked with some of these uh, migrants. So I want to start with the, the part I think that, uh, for, for, for me anyway, that is, that is interesting to get to the bottom of is the Texas portion of it. Um, the people that you spoke with, did their journey originate in Texas? And did they explain to you how they got from Texas to Florida before being flown to Massachusetts? Yes, they did, Joy. Um, good evening. They told me that they were in Texas. They were kicked out of a shelter because they started charging them $85 a day. So they got kicked out. And a woman approached them and told them that she would help them out. They moved to a hotel. And one moment to the next, she tells them, get on these buses. I am going to help you out. This is what they said to me. They were driven to an airport, saw the planes, and were told to get on flights because they were going to be given shelter they were going to get food in, including prepaid credit cards they were they were even going to get a surprise on the plane and they were going to have a chance at starting a new life some of them say that the plane the two flights it was two flights they stopped in florida briefly even um, florida governor DeSantis recognized that those flights stopped in florida and then they came to uh, martha's vineyard and, and just to be clear the people that you spoke with, they're mostly Venezuelan and Colombian. And I, and I just to clarify, you're in Cape Cod, where the migrants are now. They've been moved to Cape Cod, and that's where you are. are had these um, families presented themselves as asylum seekers in Texas? Yes, they had. And that's one of the things that they're very adamant about. They are angry that they're being called undocumented immigrants or illegals, that they can't stand the word, because they say as soon as they got to the United States, they turned themselves in to immigration officials. They were given paroles. We saw the documents that they have. So they're, they're here in a legal fighting for legal status, and they're trying to do it the right way. And, and, and one more question. Um, did this woman, who, who we've just been her, her told the name Perla, Perla is the name that we've been given. Did they mention that this woman showed them any form of ID um, to identify what organization she might have been with? They didn't mention her name to me. Um, they did not know any organizations. They say that they were gullible, they were vulnerable, they were hungry, they didn't have money. They're at the border and somebody is offering, offering them a flight out. They're offering them jobs, security, shelter for their children. So they decided to take the opportunity. They were put in a hotel, they were fed. So they saw these promises coming true. So that's why they decided to follow her. All of them. Not a single one of them told me that they knew they were coming to Massachusetts. Not a single one of them told me that they knew what Martha's Vineyard was. They said they couldn't even <clears throat> locate it in the map and they didn't even know it existed. Cristina Londonio Rooney, excellent reporting. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Okay, I want to turn to you, uh, Anna Escamani. Um, you heard all of that. Um, you are a state representative, a government representative of the state of Florida. What you heard there sounds to me like a story that was about a Texas a group of people who presented mm -hmm. themselves legally in Texas as un, uh, as immigrants, not as undocumented people, but as asylum seekers, did everything they were supposed to do and were taken through Florida. Is there anything in the law that was passed in Florida that allocated $12 million to do these removals that says that Texas asylum seekers may be moved using Florida money? Because $12 million was ad, 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 allocated for this, and $615,000 per the Miami Herald were spent on these flights. That is about $12,300 per migrant. Well, Joy, first of all, I am filled with righteous anger about this action by Governor Ron DeSantis. And in the state budget, we fought to remove these dollars that Republicans added in an effort to pursue their anti-immigrant and candidly, just their political partisan agenda to continuously pivot blame of real problems on the backs of immigrants. There is absolutely no reason why Governor Ron DeSantis should be doing this to protect or secure Florida, especially when we're talking about asylum seekers in a different state. 
And so it is right. unbelievable that Governor Ron DeSantis would do this, but also lure and lie to people in a different state to get into a bus so he can just pursue his greater political ambitions to the harm of vulnerable communities, including children.